Hey, so another year, another new version of Pure Raw. Pure Raw 4 just came out from DxO today, in fact, if I time this video right, and it is now available to upgrade to if you are an existing user of Pure Raw, or if you are completely new and you've never tried it before, you can download a 30-day trial. Uh, whichever you are, you can find a link down below in the video description to learn more. So with version four, this is now the fourth review that I've <laughs> that I've done of Pure Raw. You know, obviously I'm a fan of the software. I think it's good stuff. I think it's a good utility. It can work wonders with some images, especially older images, older you know digital images, especially from like older DSLRs or crop sensor cameras. And now there are some new features in version four some new things to check out and uh, let's jump in here and take a look. So to open this raw file in uh, Pure Raw 4, you come up here to the file menu, uh, go to plug in extras, and here you'll see two options, preview and process and process instantly. Process instantly, we'll take a look at it in a minute, but that is basically like the older version, like Pure Raw 3, but now we have this new option called preview and process. Let's click on that. And here we are in Pure Raw 4. And I have to tell you, I am so happy uh, <laughs> to see this. I believe in every single one of my reviews, I've said that the software really needs a live preview window so you can actually see what it is that you know all these different settings do. And this has only become more important, I think, over time as more settings and more controls have been added to the software. And finally, we have a live preview. Distortion, vignette have been accounted for and all of that. But the real magic of Pure Raw is when you get into the details. So let's just jump in here and go one to one. This is the before, that's straight out of camera. And then this is the after, before, after. <laughs> If we go back and forth here, you can see that it's just, you know, it's pulling all kinds of things out of the side of the rock face here that are just not present at all in the original. So it's not only enhancing what's there, but it's also kind of performing a little bit of a magic trick as well. Pure Raw 4 is not only, you know, doing things like uh, fixing vignette and chromatic aberration and distortion like Lightroom does, but it's also going a step further by uh, addressing the softness of the particular lens that you happen to be using. And you have options in here for how light or how strong you want the, um, the effect to be. Also new in version four is a new version of the D Prime XD uh, denoising and demosaicing engine. This is the 2.0 version. It's called XD2. I don't feel like at the end of the day there is that much of a qualitative difference between the D Prime option and D Prime XD or even D Prime XD2. Yes, I mean XD and XD2 are just a little bit better. It seems to be a little more intelligent compared to the older uh, Deep Prime model. These engines are so good anyway that it doesn't really matter all that much, I think. You can't go wrong with either one of these. I guess my point here is that even though there is a new XD 2.0 version, I don't know. I wouldn't get too excited about it. I don't think it's, uh, I don't think it's reason enough to upgrade to the new version um, alone. I think there's other better reasons to upgrade. Something else that's new in Pure Raw 4 is we now have additional advanced controls. Uh, and if this is, you know, closed, if you don't see them, you just open it up like that. They now added some new denoising options here so that we have a little more control over how the noise is removed from an image. Original straight out of camera raw file on the left. And this is the new and improved version over here on the right. See all this noise in here? That's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's two different types of noise. You have color noise and you have luminance noise. And this image has a little bit of both. If we just turn luminance all the way down and take a look at that, with zero luminance denoise, it has removed all of the color noise, but has retained the luminance noise. So it almost looks like grain in the image. It fixes the color problems, uh, but now we have uh, just the luminance noise that is left over. So we can, you know, if we want something that's completely clean, we can uh, just raise luminance back up and then just find the level that we want you know, up until the point where it starts to eat into some of the fine details. Now, speaking of fine details, uh, then we have this option here called force details. Now this uh, controls how aggressive some of these, um, some of these small uh, details are on the edge of these areas that are being denoised. 
Now, right now, some of you may be thinking, wait a second, doesn't Adobe Lightroom already have a good denoise AI tool built into it? A tool that not only denoises an image, but also helps recover details and clarity in the raw file and, and then generate a new DNG file for editing? The answer is obviously yes, there is a tool built in uh, that is exactly that. And I think some ways this tool was inspired by you know, somewhat of a reaction to the work that uh, DxO has done and Topaz has done and Adobe added this not too long ago. And if you haven't explored it, it's definitely worth exploring because you can get some pretty good results out of it. But in my experience, there are some situations in which it's not quite as good as what you can get with a third party app like Pure Raw. So let's take a look at a comparison here and I'm gonna jump over to Photoshop because this will be the easiest way to see them all uh, together. And this image here is one, some of you know exactly where this is. This is the Narrows and Zion. And this image was kind of a fluke, I think. I, I, I found this just purely searching by ISO. I think I shot this handheld at like F16 or something. And the ISO is wild. I mean, it's like ISO 5000. And this is with my old Canon DSLR and holy cow, there's a lot of color noise in here. I mean, just look at this. I mean, it's just like loads of green and magenta and red and blue and it looks awful. I mean, it's really, really bad. So um, let's, um, let's take a look at what the enhance tool in Lightroom created. So that is the uh, Lightroom version, which obviously looks much, much better. And then the next version is Pure Raw with a Deep Prime XD engine and actually let me uh, let me switch up here. Let me come up here to the top because I think this will be easier to see. Okay, so that's the Lightroom Enhanced tool. And then this is Pure Rock. And as you can see, uh, there's definitely more detail. There's more texture in the rock face here. It's pulling out more of it and is definitely doing a pretty good job enhancing it. And it's definitely better if we go all the way back to the original there. That's the original, that's the new one very big difference between the two. Let's take a look at another area here going to, I remember this being rather interesting. There's the original raw file again, just, oh my God, the noise is so bad. There is uh, the Lightroom enhanced version. And then that is DxO Pure Raw. Some of you will probably look at this and say, there's too much clarity. There's too much detail recovery going on. And I think in some instances, you're absolutely right. You know, this kind of stuff, usually you, you like to save it, or at least I like to save it for the end of a photo editing workflow. So I'm applying sharpening towards the end of the process and not towards the beginning. Uh, what you can do, of course, as I showed earlier, is that if you don't want this level of you know, extra detail and uh, clarity uh, being applied to the image, you can always turn lens uh, softness off. And uh, so let's you know, do that. The next layer up is that. And so this is DxO Pure Raw 4 with the lens softness turned off. That's on, that's off. So it's denoised the image and it's helped improve, you know, the vignette and the distortion, chromatic aberration, all the good stuff. But it has left the details and the clarity of the image, um, you know, pretty much alone. Okay, so getting back to the live preview mode here, um, there are some quirky things about it that I wanna point out. One of the things I noticed when I first started using Pure Raw 4 was that um, whenever I updated a setting over here, the preview did not update. And the reason for that is because this option in the preferences was disabled. This uh, enables automatic previewing. So it was like this when I first started using Pure Raw 4, which meant that, you know, anytime a setting changed over here in the right column, I would have to come down here and click update. Like, you know, every single time I change something over here in the right column. Personally, I think from a user experience perspective, it would be better if the preview, you know, if you're gonna have a preview, I mean, just, you know, let the preview work, you know, right out of the box. And if someone's computer isn't fast enough, uh, to use the preview and they have problems, they can always opt out. There can be some some buggy behavior with the with the window um, zooming in and out and the like. Sometimes it seems to get a little bit confused. Like it's not um, like I'm clicking the buttons right now and it's it doesn't seem to be doing much of anything. Let me try that again. Yeah, it's still um, yeah, it's still not updating. I don't know uh, what the deal is. Oh well. Nope, shouldn't be doing that. Okay, so yeah, these windowing tools definitely um, need a little <laughs> need a little bit of work, um, and hopefully some of this will be addressed in the final release. If not, I hope that they're ironed out shortly thereafter. 
Let's take a look at that other option that I skipped over earlier. So let's go back to file, plug in extras, and go to process instantly. Process instantly is a lot like uh, the older Pure Raw 3 version. It's more of a black box. You don't get a live preview. You have two options here, one for corrections. And here you can assign the same settings, whatever it is that you want. Hit apply, go to output, and that's where you control the file format, where it goes, how it's named. And then you just click on process now and it'll process the file and then re-import it back into Adobe Lightroom without going through the previewing step. Also new in Pure Raw 4, there is a taskbar menu bar widget that the app uh, installs, which displays progress and shows you, you know, what's going on with the app, which might be helpful if you are batch processing an entire folder full of raw image files. Personally, I don't batch process. I use DxO Pure Raw selectively only with the images that I want to use it with, mainly because the, the, um, the file size of the uh, DNG files that are created by Pure Raw, they tend to be much larger than the straight out of camera uh, raw images. So if I were to process like every single raw file, you know, from uh, from like a full day of shooting, it would eat up quite a bit of hard drive space. So that is not something that I use. I don't use the batch tools, but if that is something of interest to you, then, you know, you can absolutely do it. One little uh, asterisk that I need to put on here. One thing that's really, really important to keep in mind, I would highly recommend keeping those original raw files shot by the camera. Don't delete them. You may be tempted to do so in order to save space because you just created a whole bunch of, you know, additional optimized DNGs. But the problem here is that when you create a optimized DNG with pure raw, you can't go back to the original you know, camera data. It's not possible because it's gone. If you deleted the, the file that came from your camera, there's no way to undo it. There's no way to go back to what the camera originally created. And it's important to hold on to that file because AI models change, software changes. And unless the software, whether it's Pure Raw or some other app, unless the software knows like, you know, where the, the image came from and what type of camera was used, what type of lens was used, it's not going to be able to create another new optimized version of it using whatever the latest new technology is. So it's really, really important. And I have to stress this just to make sure that people don't get confused and then later regret it. Definitely hold on to those straight out of camera raw files. I mean, those are some of your most important, you know, things in your possession. So even though Pure Raw creates better versions, hold on to those originals. Who would benefit most from Pure Raw? Well, I think, again, anyone who has like a, a deep catalog of older digital raw images, definitely people who do aerial photography would, you know, definitely recommend uh, this app for them. I think also anyone uh, who, you know, obsesses over things like detail and clarity and sharpness. Like, you know, the first thing that comes to mind to me would be like, like wildlife photographers or macro photographers, you know, feathers of a, of a bird's wing or like the eye on a spider, like, you know, something like that. Like if those are things that you're into, Pure Raw is definitely worth checking out. Cons of Pure Raw? Well, one would be, as I said, file size. Uh, the newly optimized DNGs do consume quite a bit of space. And when you add on the original raw file, which you're going to keep, right? Well, you end up yeah, it, it can get out of control pretty quickly and you end up filling up your hard drive pretty fast. So, uh, so yeah, so there's that. Uh, version 4, the new previewing tool is good. In the beta that I've been testing, is a, yeah, the, the tool is a little bit buggy. The windowing tools um, definitely need a little more work. I think if they iron that out, it would be even better. Also, as I said earlier, I don't think the new and improved XD2, you know, um, denoising and demosaicing model is necessarily that much better than XD or really that much better than Deep Prime was. I mean, maybe some of you will disagree. Um, you know, maybe some of you will see different results than I have, you know, using your own uh, files. So, uh, so yeah, it's definitely worth downloading a trial if you've never used it to check it out and see what you see. So I think uh, version four is a solid upgrade. If you uh, own a license for an earlier version of DxO Pure Raw, you can download and purchase the latest version at a discounted price. And by the way, uh, Pure Raw is not a uh, subscription software, which is uh, somewhat of, an, of uh, an anomaly these days when so many people are moving to subscription models. But with Pure Raw, you purchase it, you download it, you use it for however long you want, and, uh, and then you choose when and if you want to upgrade the software uh, in the future. So uh, maybe today's the day if you have an earlier version of Pure Raw. But if you're brand new and you've never tried it, never used it, uh, you can also download a free trial using that link down below 
in the video description. Thank you for being here. Thank you to DxO for providing me with, um, with the software for testing. I appreciate it and I hope this video was helpful and that you learned something from it. If you want to check out something else from me, I would um, recommend, no, it's this way. I'll recommend checking out this video over here. And um, that's it for me to, for today. So thanks so much, everyone. I will see you next time.